The wait is finally over. We should mark this as a holiday, Sean Fitz. Penn State finally gets their defensive tackle recruit out of the transfer portal. That's what we're here to talk about. Happened late last night. We're here with you on YouTube a couple hours later to talk about the latest Nittany Lions. So, Fitz, give us the information that people have been waiting for. And uh, I don't know if you, you know, Catholics with the rosaries, if they've been praying about it, but it's finally here. My mom's going to find you with that joke. Anyway, uh, Alonzo Ford, former Old Dominion defensive tackle, is the one for Penn State. They've been looking for competition, depth, what have you, in the transfer portal for defensive tackle. Not going to lie, not a very deep defensive, or excuse me, not a very deep portal cycle to begin with. Um, and then you, when you when you extrapolate that with the defensive tackles that are in there, not really many options. But Penn State uh, was proactive on this one, got him on campus this week for an official visit. We put our pick in on Wednesday morning, and by Wednesday night, he was a Nittany Lion. So uh, you, you have found what you're looking for. Of course, uh, the portal giveth, taketh, et cetera. But, uh, you know, you, you've got a defensive tackle. And, and it looked for a while, given what was out there, given what was, um, you know, the, given the choices that they had to work with, seems like a pretty good uh, option for Penn State at this point in the game. Yeah, and part of the conversation here, I think an easy access point to this is Old Dominion, Ricky Ronnie, and when you're going through these fast-paced breakneck portal evaluations, having familiarity is a big thing. So it, that's a that's a good place to start. That was a part of the evaluation here, right? I would guess so. I mean, I I have contacts on both sides, obviously, and reached out to them. Didn't seem like it was like there was a ton of bitterness or anything like that. Now he played two years from there, and uh, maybe maybe that's what Old Dominion has to be is a developmental program where you come in you find some athletes you, they took a chance on him at the end of the 2020 cycle uh not that it was a, a an offer like a signing day offer but like he came down to wake forest uh old dominion jmu and you've got 6 2 280 or whatever he was at the time so old dominion could take a chance on that guy and they did they kept him home developed him did not play in 2020 nobody from old dominion played in 2020 Jumped onto the board as a freshman, uh, should have been an all-conference freshman player, uh, was not. There's a quote from Ricky Ronnie, really good quote from Ricky Ronnie saying, I don't know what you got to do to be an all-conference freshman player, you know, if, if this guy's not one. So um, that was good. And then again, productive as a sophomore. So I think the thing to take away from here, he's got three years left to play two. So it's kind of like adding a junior college defensive tackle that's been in a Division One weight program for a couple of years. So there, you, you've got some upside there. Um, I don't think he's a guy that comes in and, and starts right away. I think he's a guy that you add to the rotation, and then it helps you in 2024. We've talked about that before, how important it was to add not just a guy that can help you out on the field this year, but to extend that room because that room has a little bit of a dip in terms of eligibility yeah. after this season. So, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it, it kind of fits what they were looking for, you know, whether it's the um, – like the. It was, I don't think he was the best guy in the portal from the winter cycle to the spring cycle, whatever. They went after a couple in the winter cycle that I think could have helped them out a little bit more on the field in 2023, but certainly high upside, certainly a guy that can really, um, you know, sort of if he flourishes in the weight program, if he flourishes in nutrition, gets a little bit bigger, um, that, that can really help them out. Yeah, there's a, I don't know, there's a perfect comparison to Kazai Izzard, but kind of that body type. The Short term, long term, you touched on that. Um, just a little more specific there, if you if you would. Do you think this is a guy that is going to play? Do you think he's going to be a guy that red shirts and takes those two years down the road, or is this somebody that is an acute solve to the we'll call it air quotes problem that Penn State had at defensive tackle, wanting to add to that room? So, how do you think the the those three years will break out? I think he enters into the back end of the rotation right now. And and does that mean he plays four games and they try and preserve that red shirt? Maybe. Um, but y you don't know until you get him on campus. I mean, he's, yeah. he's spent two years playing division one football. I know it's a different uh, level and he's going to have to take some time to get used to the big 10. Um, but at the same time, he's been playing division one football. So you got to get him here. You got to get him in pads. You got to see where he fits with your other group of guys before you can make that determination. If he's good enough to play in that three, four role, um, the three, like the three and the four in the depth chart, role yeah. then you got to play him this year and you got to forget about that third year but you know they're, they, they do have options so I think that that's important to remember with him um can he come in I, I don't think he's uh Derek Tangelo like I don't think he's a plug and play guy that you yeah. can count on to to be as good and, and I just keep going back to Tangelo because I, I thought he was so great for for the role that he cultivated and he turned into um 
during that season, that one season that he was here. I think it's a it's a different thing, but I don't I didn't see any Derek Tangelos out there in the portal. Like that's the important thing here. There was no 320 pound one technique in the portal that you know Penn State found and nobody else found. You know, so I I think that it's a guy that can help you out this year and he can really I think. 2024 is probably when you're looking at him being a potential starter, potentially that guy that's uh, that's right there alongside the, you know, hopefully Izzard if he's, you know, if he's back the, for 2024. So you've got a lot of options there. And I think that was the important thing is, is to find somebody with, you know, time remaining. I think Penn yeah. State's OK at defensive tackle right now. Like we for all the hand wringing we do about that, for all the talk we do about the Michigan game and getting bigger on the defensive front and then not getting bigger on the defensive front. Like we probably spend a little too much oxygen on that. Like uh, <laughs> it pops up once, maybe twice a year. He did it with Michigan last year. He did it with Illinois the year before. And obviously you don't want that to happen, but at the same time, it's not a problem that's going to cost you across the board, like for, yeah. for 12 games next year. So as, and that's probably a victim of being this great defense. Like this defense is, top notch at several spots it's not a defensive tackle that's okay like you need to be better at defensive tackle you can acknowledge that but at the same time it's not like you're putting 170 pound guys out there that, <laughs> that can't just hold up against the run so yeah be very interested to see how this fits the entire roster penn state obviously sees a window where they think they can be a very very good football team this was a hole that they needed to address this is something that you always need bodies at defensive tackle and this is an experienced body it's been a productive one um, at, albeit at a lower level, but you know, you've got, you've got a lot to build on there. Yeah. Not to re litigate those two games, th those two games that you mentioned, Illinois and Michigan, both had extenuating circumstances around them. If you remember PJ Mustafer didn't play against Illinois. That was the first game after his injury. So they've got young guys playing in positions. They just weren't ready for prime time. And in both of those situations, the, uh, the defense was forced to play corners and safeties in run fits. And that was one way that I think teams are attacking anyway, but the Penn state got stinged a little bit by those two games. And it's not necessarily because they weren't big enough. It's there, there are other schematic reasons why stuff like that happened. But um, looking at his film, I do think he addresses some of those run defense needs. This team is, is all about, you know, playing the gap. And he is quick. He's aggressive. He's got the great length that we talked about. He's I, I really like what he brings to the table as a run defender. And there is that upside in a long term sense that you mentioned in the Penn State strength and conditioning program. He looks like he has a little bit more room to grow. He can probably get stronger. And when you have a guy that is good in one on one situations and uh, is able to move and uh, be athletic enough to not get reach blocked. These are all things Penn State and Manny Diaz in this defense are looking for. So I think that it's a really good fit in terms of what they're looking for. As a pass rusher, they've got Beeman. They've got um, guys on the outside that can play on the inside. They've got Zayn Durant, obviously. So he doesn't need to step in and be those things. And right now, I think that's the biggest area of growth for him, where he's going to, Deion Barnes is going to work with him as a pass rusher, because there's not a lot here when it comes to, I think, uh, I don't want to say finesse, but like, you know, technique, where he is not really executing a plan at all times watching him. You can check out all the nuances we're getting into here on T. Frank's Film Room, which is up at bluewhiteillustrated.com. But those are kind of my high-level takeaways. I think this is a guy that can come in and um, be something you're looking for long-term. But the value proposition here, as you mentioned, is, is he going to play four games? Is he going to get 20 snaps a game? Is he going to get 10? And at what point is that red shirt more valuable than playing him those 10 to 15 snaps? And yeah. he's going to determine a lot of that, right? Yeah, and I think I, I'm not sure the conversation. Like I, I've reached out to, to Ford, haven't gotten back. Um, I'm not sure what the conversation has been with them. I, I just keep bringing up the third year because it's available. Like it, yep. it's not necessarily a situation where you you look at this and say, okay, if he redshirts it, it's it, that's kind of a video game. Uh, mentality there look at it this year you red shirt and then you get them for 2024 and 2025 it's not always that simple especially for a guy that's coming into transfer most transfers are not coming into red shirt that's kind of just the mentality that you, that's why he went in the transfer portal th to begin with is to play um again not worried about pass rush like you said they're going to find pass rush from somewhere. It's not going to be defensive tackle. Like yeah. it's, uh, you know, you, Hakeem Beeman can do that. Uh, Izzard can do that. Uh, Zane Durant can do that. You can move deny Dennis Sutton down. Like you've yep. got those ends. You've got those linebackers that can blitz like defensive tackle. Like if you're looking for a pass rushing defensive tackle, 
there are better options or there are better um, holes that you need to fill in this defense. This is a run play. This is a guy that can play the run, gets a little bit bigger. Be interested to compare him to Jordan Vandenberg, just in terms yeah. of body type, in terms of uh, arm length, athleticism. He's probably not as strong as Vandenberg, but then again, not as many are. Um, but <laughs> get him in the weight room with Chuck Losey, get him beside Vandenberg, see how strong you can get him and take on those blocks. So Penn State is not going to have a traditional one technique. They're not going to have P.J. Mustafer in there at 325 pounds that is kind of playing the same role. They're going to have a bunch of three techniques. They're right around 290 pounds, and they're going to move them all over the line of scrimmage, and they're going to ask them to be active. It's going to be different than you're used to seeing, but that's kind of what you're playing with on the roster. This is uh, you know college football. You don't have the ability to go out and sign uh, a big guy to, to, to sit in the middle. Um, and again, as we mentioned in the portal, it just wasn't – that wasn't there. So – be interesting to see how he fits in. I think he's more of a back end of the rotation guy right now. And you're not going to know that until he shows up on campus, but he's got the opportunity to play in that four man rotation, play and potentially play in a five man rotation, bridge the gap until maybe Caleb artist comes along and be as a sixth or fifth guy. So like you've got options there at defensive tackle. Again, a lot of hand wringing for an issue that is an issue that is worth talking about, but is not the, thing that's going to cost you a season i don't yeah. believe yeah uh, we talk about this and i think some penn state fans think that penn that the team is a one technique away from a national championship run and let's start with quarterback and dissolve that mystery first and then we can talk about defensive tackle like two or three steps down the line from whether or not they're going to beat ohio state and michigan which is the uh siren call of penn state fans and what they're expecting for this year so if it's any last thoughts i think that this is a good fit for penn state i think this is a fit that's going to help them in the long run anything else that you you want to add to alonzo ford joining the nittany lions just for 2023 i think it it helps you in that 10 game season and then you're you're curious if it does help you in that two game game season with Ohio State and Michigan, which is obviously what everybody's looking for. So don't know that answer yet. We will see. But I think it's a, a good pickup for Penn State, considering the, t the time that he has uh, left in eligibility and uh, the ability to, uh, to to be productive. And that's what he's done at Old Dominion so far. Penn State's still hot after some corners in the portal. So if they are able to snag one of those guys, I'm presuming they're going to be able to because they've been successful at filling most of their uh, holes so far in the transfer portal era. So when that happens, what I'm trying to say is check out Blue White Illustrated here on YouTube. Please like this video and subscribe to bluewhiteillustrated.com so you can get all the inside information. You get Fitz's uh, thoughts and opinions on this stuff well before it gets here to the YouTube channel because we're plugged in to what's going on with Penn State football, and you should be as well. I'm Thomas Frank Carr. He is Sean Fitz. We will be back the next time there's breaking news for Penn State football.